from deep in the woods of Pittsfield Township, Michigan. It's the Grace and Paul Podcast. Grace is not joining us today. It's just me, Paul, and I have as my special guest, my son, Joshua. Hey, Josh. Hey, Dad. How are you? I'm doing okay. So I proposed to interview you. You did. Because I know uh, that you have some things on your mind. I do. <laughs> so I actually, I sent you a list of questions in advance. What I said, we talk via Twitter because we're never in the same room at the same time. True. Um, it was, let's see. I said, I would like to come up with a list of questions in advance. I would like to interview you for the podcast. Yes. So the first question was, this is kind of a big question, so feel free to, uh, you know. Down a little bit. Is, um, how have you been, how have the past two years been for you since March 13th, 2020, when we started our isolation? Okay, so I, when I, one of the few things I wanted to note about the pandemic was when it started out, it was actually kind of fun. Because it was like, we get to stay home, we don't get to, we don't get sick, we get to just stay at home, watch movies all day, and just chill out, pretty much do whatever we want. But uh, things kind of just sort of deteriorate over time, in the sense that you feel less like um, you're willingly staying at home, and more like you're trapped at home. Or like you're trapped at home. Yeah. Yeah. Like a prison sentence. Well, don't spin. Sorry. Don't spin back and forth on your chair, sorry. Yeah, I don't spin. I want a consistent volume level, so you yes, have to yes. be facing the mic consistently. But um, so early on, I mean, we didn't literally. So I, I should say that just to recall what happened. So we we were preparing. We knew a shitstorm was about to hit. And it was on the way, yeah. So we actually prepared by stocking up on a lot of food items. Yes. So that we would not need to go out at all for a while, really, for for food items, especially for weeks and weeks, yeah. several weeks, and we succeeded in that. And right after that sort of lockdown, uh, I started working from home, and I only worked from home for a week, and then I was put on furlough. Yeah, and so I actually remember how you got fired from uh, Thrill Labs. It was it was very upsetting, honestly. One of your coworkers wasn't wearing his mask, even though the company policy at the time was that every person in the building had to wear a mask. You couldn't take it off when you yeah. were in the building. That was actually a year later, though. So it that's was. jumping ahead by a, a, almost a whole year. Well, my memories of it of those past years have kind of jumbled, but yeah, I'm I'm sure they have. But um, during that first, so so during that first uh, spring and summer, yeah. Um, I actually was was on furlough. I was not getting paid. Yes. Um, but supposedly I had a job to go back to. Yeah. And then I was trying to collect unemployment, which is like a small amount of pay that you can get uh, to, you know, hopefully to keep you housed and fed while yes. you, when you lose a job. Yes. However, Michigan unemployment is a really a tiny fraction of our actual expenses and so it was like 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 10 percent of our actual <laughs> expenses and so it pays very little and i could not get um i couldn't get it going because the entire state Still tried still. to collect unemployment all at once basically oh. not the entire oh. state but you know most hundreds majority. of thousands of people a lot of people just this this huge spike and the meanwhile the system just collapsed yeah right but then i was also we were receiving some stimulus checks we had some pandemic yes. stimulus and between those stimulus checks and then eventually the unemployment plus what they were calling enhanced unemployment which was something that actually bernie sanders got through yeah um we were doing okay with money not that. great but okay. Yeah. For we're a few it, months. It by. So, do you remember when you know we were doing so much time in the garden that year? I think I do actually. We were doing a lot of stuff in the garden. We were um Was that 2020? Was that around the time when we were working on the main garden bed in front of the porch? 
Well, that was that it would have been so I, we uh, got the main bed put together the previous year. I think I remember that because I have like some memories of um just a ring of cinder blocks and nothing else. There wasn't it wasn't really going that great, but in tw- I mean we had started with a bunch of we stuff. Started, yes. In 2019, but then in 2020 I actually had time to work on it pretty much every day for several yeah. months, you know. Yeah. Speaking of 2020 though, um one of the things I remember from 2020 is how everyone, uh, like the majority of people you see on social media, yes, um, people were having a huge reaction to it. Essentially, what were what were you seeing that you recall? Is people after a few weeks were like are very upset that they couldn't go out and see their friends and socialize. Uh, some content creators I know were talking about it, and they were talking about how they miss their friends and but they tell people to stay safe and stay at home. Uh, that's all kind of changed. Completely. That has changed, because but that's interesting. Because content and so people on social media, they don't really even talk about the pandemic anymore, which is uh, sort of adds to the subconscious message that people are trying to convey and the mainstream media is trying to convey that just but it's all over. blowing it off, that's all over. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. And the, Well, keep in mind that in the first year, there were no vaccines yet. Yes, which is actually more why I appreciated some of the people uh, the first year who were constantly telling, like, content creators specifically, who were constantly telling their viewers to stay safe, stay at home, wear a mask, all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that is nice, you know. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that vaccines fix everything. They don't. But I'm saying that as a protective measure, we didn't even have that. Also yeah. in the first year, we didn't have, um, in the first spring and summer, we really didn't have good masks. That's true. So stores started uh, selling, like, I, I still have some of the masks I bought in spring of 2020, and they're basically made of, like, um, sweatshirt fabric or something. Yeah. They're just uh, these... Those, are, those uh, DIY masks do have a nice vibe to them, and they do wick, but not as well as we need them to. They help some. They're yeah. better than nothing, but they're, they're, not, nothing. they're, they're not so effective. Um, and also, th- uh, one of the reasons people complained about masks... Yeah. So much is that those kinds of masks, like with the, like this polyester fabric or whatnot, the, yeah. like this flocked stuff, it was, it was like the stuff they used to make fleece jackets. Or um, is um, it's harder to breathe through than yes. an actual like KN95 or N95. But yeah. but like those kinds of uh, so what then later. On that year, uh, surgical masks were relatively easy to find. Those are the blue ones? Yes. Like the pale blue ones? The pale blue ones. They have rectangular. Like, sort of like creases in them? Yeah. And those, again, they help, but... but those, not as much as we need them to. Those are not adequate. Um, a thing to keep in mind also is that the original strain, um, yeah. the the... The Wuhan variety, they call it the the wild type or alpha. It's like there's different strains actually, but um, yeah. the ones that we were concerned about then that were circulating uh, were they were highly contagious, but they were less contagious than what we're dealing with now. Yeah, significantly less. Yeah. So um, yeah, and we were getting a lot of weird and conflicting advice. At first, the like advice we were getting from CDC and other organizations was primarily in in workplaces, including yeah, was primarily like wash your hands wash your and hands. sanitize surfaces, sanitize surfaces, wear masks. Yeah, um, six six feet, six feet. Yeah, it's not enough. But and that? no, it was a total. We know now that the way they came up with that number was pretty much just this compromise, this total nonsense. There was not a study that said. Yeah. But people treated that as gospel. They're like, hey, as long as I'm six feet away from you, I can be coughing and sneezing and, you know, whatever. Breakdancing. <laughs> break dancing and, you know, it's, it's... Whatever. And we're still safe. They, I actually noticed this at first. Yeah. The first thing I noticed was that in a lot of places where, like, uh, hospitals, they would have little mugs on the floor that's six feet apart, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But then I look at them, I'm like, that doesn't look like six feet. Yeah, it's not as far as as you might think. I, yeah, I because, don't... like, I'm not even trying to say that their measurements were incorrect, but just that when I look at them, I'm like, when you hear the, when you hear six feet, it sounds like, oh, they're, like, over there. But when actual six feet, they're actually really close to you. Six feet isn't that far. <laughs> it's not that far. I The idea also, I think, came out of, like, 
how people thought they might be able to rearrange classrooms to space desks. Yeah. Without having to reduce the number of people in the room. Yeah. But that's actually the only way it can really go, though, is that you kind of need to uh, reduce the the number of people in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So no one was talking then. I mean, here's the thing your mom was. Yes. Right. Because she has a background in public health and reads, you know, she does her homework, she studies the papers and the research. Yeah. She was talking about ventilation. She was talking about um, she knew she really masking. Was. You know, yeah. the CDC was saying, or, or the, you know, the Surgeon General, and, and especially he's been vilified a lot and deserves some of it. Doctor Fauci was saying, you know, we don't people don't average people don't need surgical masks. And what he what it turns out was he basically knew that there was a huge mask shortage and he wanted to try and ensure that um, hospital workers would have access to high-quality, high-filtration masks. And, and that's the thing about it that like, confused me, really, um, is that it do- I don't think mass production is like... I, mean, ma- I said mass. Mask production. Mask production. Is that, like, expensive? Or to, like, it's not. Yeah. And like, you know what? It even too much to do. Now that production is ramped up, including some production inside the country, yeah, you can get a very nice, high quality box a- of masks. Well, you can get N95s, N95s, which are pretty much the gold standard. Although there are yeah. better masks, they're but they're masks. pretty much the the gold standard, and they are um, yeah. about a buck a piece. Yeah, right. And I recommend an N95 with uh, one of those like gaiters or something over it. It's like a tube scarf it's a tube scarf that's what it is and you pull it up over your nose yeah so this Honestly, is what i want to be wearing is a hazmat suit but that costs five thousand dollars <laughs> you can't it's not practical to go shopping at costco in a hazmat suit it'll be fun though yeah but no i it was very scary yeah. honestly when your mom and i first started running low on supplies and were venturing out like we actually blogged about this and talked about it on facebook and on yeah. our podcast like what it was like to go into Costco wearing like these flannel masks, yeah. you know, where and and basically thinking that um, at the time that uh, surfaces were a major source of of infection. Yes. And so this meant we had this protocol. We actually wore gloves, like, and to go out to all our grocery shopping. To, from place to place, taking our gloves off after each place yeah. and sanitizing our hands, you, you had to use 16 pairs of gloves. And in the summer, yeah, oh, because Jesus there were Christ. two of us with two hands each, that's four gloves, yeah. and we went to four stores. Oh, it's sweet Lord. Right? Okay. So you can go through... Uh, gloves were also in short supply, right? So yeah. you couldn't really get great surgical gloves you could get like gardening gloves and stuff these these vinyl gloves initially they did come back into supply but also like uh alcohol wipes and bottled alcohol to use spray for sanitizing yeah. um these things were all hard to find and hard all to come by so uh, but it was it. so weird yeah. like w- trying to go to to do our grocery shopping in the summer in Costco yeah. Like loading a carload of food, you know, with um, wearing these like flannel fabric masks and just sweating our asses off and feeling like we couldn't breathe because these, like I say, these masks aren't as comfortable yeah. as like an N95. They really do make you feel like you're out of breath. One negative thing that I would notice about N95s, this is personally just like a personal nitpick, but I wear glasses. So every time I wear glasses, if I push them up to the bridge of my nose, the N95 shoots right up into them. I get completely fogged and I can't see anything. That's, um, so... So I have to wear them like down on yeah. the tip of my nose like that. That happened more to me with the surgical masks. Okay. But like if the N95, if the little nose piece is, or KN95, if the nose piece is properly fitted and tight against your nose so that it forms a good seal, that shouldn't happen so much. N95s generally have two straps. Yeah. And you have to get one of them up high on the back of your head and one of them low down around your neck. Like around your, uh, the line, the hair, Where you, hair line. Edge of your hair, yeah. usually. And so if you get them arranged like that so that it really is pulled tight all the way around and forms a seal, 
that thing you're describing with your glasses fogging up doesn't really happen. That's good. Which is actually the N95s are better for that than the KN or the certainly than the surgical masks. So. Yeah. I actually, uh, I probably should get back to wearing, I put, not get back to, I need to wear those ones more because the um, the masks with the little ear loopies, uh, they actually have been putting lost just in my ears. Oh, the surgical masks? Yeah, yeah the, those, <laughs> those kinds of masks. With like the they loopies. get uncomfortable. I, I yeah. so... But anyway, I don't think it's causing like permanent damage to my. No, anything, it's not. But, but it, no, it it's it's like well, even if like it's, it's like wearing ill-fitting glasses all day long. Yeah. Right. So, however, you guys have not really needed to wear these things constantly. Yeah. So Masters. we did. Yeah, we did. Um, well, anyway, so the, describing the first summer, like we were sanitizing mail. Yeah. And we were sanitizing every package that came in, and we were using Clorox wipes on everything, which yeah. actually damaged a bunch of surfaces. It damaged the steering wheel of my car because yeah. we were sanitizing every time we got in and out of the car. And also, uh, Door on handles. a lot of packages, it would wipe off all the ink. All the <laughs> like on mail packages, yeah, it would wipe so, the label and be like, gone. Oh, okay, who's was gone. who was this for?" <laughs> yeah. That's true, yes. So the, either the Clorox wipe or actually the alcohol wipes will sometimes wipe away the uh, print on the package label. Yeah. But it, we have given up on some of those measures. We are still asking you guys to sanitize um, mm, food and groceries. Food and groceries, groceries and packages. With alcohol wipes that comes yes. in. But we're no longer sanitizing mail because the evidence that's kind of built up over time yeah. is that. Um, COVID is not readily transmitted this way. Yeah. In other words, most people who get it don't get it from handling a, a you know, a contaminated, um, you know, electric bill <laughs> or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. It's not to say that it's impossible, but it's um, it's not a big enough risk to really to really make our major focus. Yeah. So. My personal experience of the time when we started our isolation, generally, um, in 2020, it felt it was kind of like a dream come true. Actually, we just get to stay at home and do nothing. <laughs> but you didn't just watch movies all. Yes, day. yes, of course, of course not. But that was cool, kind of what it was like. What was it? What was your next question? We did go. We did go pretty easy uh, on on you guys as far as like, yeah, don't worry about so much about your schoolwork right now. Or don't worry so much about day. your chores right now. Yeah. And we've gradually walked that back somewhat. Walked it back, yeah. Tried to get you into a, a routine of chores and all that. And it's, it's working, especially recently. Um, everyone's doing their tasks more often and getting their chores done. Yes, it's, it's extremely helpful. Yes. Um, what so, was one of your next questions? Well, they are... Basically, um, well, let me, let me ask you this because these are they're kind of general. But let me ask yeah. you: Do you remember what what went down with your choir? Not quite. I think I do remember a few things. Can I say those? Sure. So what I do remember is that um, they were going to an event in a football field. Yeah. Was that a part of the a part of the pandemic, or was that just something I'm remembering? So like, were they doing that in the pandemic, and that's what made it noteworthy? Um. I don't remember. I'm going to come okay. over. Keep talking. I'm going to come over and raise your mic. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. But I do remember they were trying. They were going to go to an event in a football field. And that, I believe, if I recall correctly, it was when the pandemic, it was somewhere in 2020. So we were kind of like, we, me and Pippin can't go to that because uh the pandemic. They were, I remember they were doing an indoor uh, performance in a shopping mall. Yes. Oh, wait, actually, I remember something about the football field the football field performance okay. that was probably crucial to it actually, which was that um they would they would wanted everyone to be there. This might not have been part of a part of the pandemic then, but they wanted everyone to be there, but we had to pay for tickets and mom and you and Mom didn't want to Oh right. Because their tickets were expensive as so. hell. We we didn't feel like yeah, I think that may have been a basketball game. Okay. It was probably a basketball game. I I might be misremembering. But there the general I've, point is uh, yeah. a game a, a sports game with a lot of people. Some details have gotten a little missing in my head by now. Yeah. And also, since I'm usually working during the week, your mom is the one who usually coordinates all your choir yeah. extracurriculars and whatnot. Why don't you text her? 
You could ask it. Because uh, we're in the middle of a <laughs> well, Yeah, you could, I could keep talking. You could just send a quick text, like, what happened with this? Well, I want to. now. I want to move along a little okay, bit more okay. expeditiously than that. But okay. um, I will. Do you recall? Uh, is that my phone? That's your phone. <laughs> Sorry. Someone, do I recall what now? I'm supposed to. Uh, I'm supposed to silence it. When recording. When recording. It's, fine, it's, fine. it's not great. But I'm my uh, a it'll friend. Be, it'll be funny if we don't edit it out. I I don't edit these because um, yeah. I do not edit these because I just have very little production time. Yeah. In general, I do I do actually edit them a little bit, but yeah. um if we if the conversation really goes on a long tangent, I will sometimes just hack a chunk out. Yeah. And sometimes I'll insert music and sometimes I won't, but uh pretty much just the recording alone. Yeah, mostly I just turn let it podcast run. Podcast recording, not to go off topic too much. A podcast recording is kind of intuitive because you just kind of have to let go with it really. <laughs> and most of the time you don't really do that much editing except to like edit s- some like music and stuff like you do people do it different ways people do it different ways some people treat it like a very delicate process a very uh production ready like NPR ready or CNN yeah. ready like a uh, p- show yeah and they are very much like, like come on let's keep it on it. schedule they said sometimes they script it all out sometimes yeah. they even um, it's a little hard for me to imagine scripting out a podcast, but oh, I've done it. Um, but it is uh, right now. The main thing is, uh, as uh, you know, I work all week more than full time, yeah, and then try to catch up with stuff on weekends. Basically, ain't nobody got time for that. So, yeah. um, and then I also have to do all the post production. So, so yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a journey. It is, but um. Uh, no, do you recall when uh, w- when the choir went uh, remote for a while? The lessons? The... I do. That was really nice because you could go and wear a mask. You only took your mask off to sing, I think. And the only other person there was the choir conductor. No, that's not what I mean by remote. No? I mean when you guys were having your, your one-on-one. We were doing Zoom calls. Right. We were doing Zoom calls in the basement with the microphone you gave us. And I set up the 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 big screen TV and yes, a, me and Veronica would uh, with us so I quiet doing calls. And I I set you up with a shotgun mic so you could stand and so sing. We could shoot everyone. Right. No. no. So you could stand and sing and be heard well on the yes. call. Yes, of course. And there was even we set up a backdrop. Yeah, that was nice. Right. So, but you remember those? I so, do remember those. So this happened for a while. Yes. Um, some of you did better with the uh, like online stuff than others. Do you remember the all remote um, video where everyone sang and and it's like an end of season? I think I do remember that. All of you contributed tracks. We recorded you yeah. singing along with this backing track. Yeah, and then everyone contributed tracks, and then your choir director assembled it all into yeah, an online. So video it sounded kind of bad well <laughs> but that i think that was kind of part of like the like sentimentality of it really every most people were recording into whatever laptop or phone microphone they had on hand yes and so of course if we all sung it together where she could actually conduct us it would of course sound sound better but right it was it sounded okay and it was a fun thing to do it was yes but Obviously, a weird, sad vibe, too, right? Yeah. Because all of you were not actually able to meet in person. And yeah. then that fall, choir started up again it in did. person. Yeah. And we decided that actually we could not v- picture any way yeah. to to make that safe. So we dropped out. So you dropped out. Quitting. It's like winning, but easier. <laughs> Where'd you get that? That's a quote from the Owl House. Oh, my God. That's, yes. I really wish we hadn't had to do that. So, anyway. Um, yeah. continue- I did enjoy quiet. But what what is one of your next questions? One of the next questions, and the, again, these are kind of open-ended, and that was the whole point. Um, yeah, so we could just talk. What are, so you, you, you immediately actually, you jumped into some of this. I did when when we started, but what are some positive things you remember? When I wrote you this question on Twitter, you said, "I remember when Bilby tested positive." <laughs> yes, that was not 
That was not, I didn't mean COVID positive. I meant positive, yes. like good things <laughs> about our... Uh, I think I probably misunderstood that, like happy things. Happy things. Yes. So what do you, you, you've already mentioned some of this. Are there any, are there any other things like that that you'd want to mention? Well, recently we got the place structure built and that was really nice. It meant we could have something to do pretty much all day, actually. Because if I wanted to, I could just go out and swing the place set pretty much all day. I mean, my butt would get sweaty, but that was about it. So, yeah, just for people who aren't following every second of our lives on social media, and good for you for not doing that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I'll mention that we have, uh, after saving up for quite some time, we have put together a gigantic uh, play structure in our front yard. Yes, it is majestic. Slide, four swings, two towers you, the kids can climb. It was actually uh, something that was installed today as, as of recording this, which is, uh, I wasn't, I didn't realize that little section underneath the area with the slide was, was a picnic table. Yes, this was always planned, Yeah, but we didn't, that. some things went wrong with the installation. We got some of the wrong parts and some missing parts. Yeah, and, then, uh, and one of the swings is missing too. Yeah, but so we finally kind of off the wheels, but and we still and now we have a huge uh, stack of four huge boxes of stuff that is extra that we didn't order. So I send that back too. But so, <laughs> but main, anyway, main point, we finally have finally it assembled. Built. So describe yeah. the, describe what's in it. Okay, so there's uh, there's two little climbing walls. One of them is smaller. You climb into the section. There's also like a these big steps and this little. When you say ladder. so, when I say small, there's like one for medium sized kids, and there's also a little climbing wall for for toddlers. For, for Malachi, yeah. Which is very, it's only like three feet high. Yeah, and then you can climb up into the section, and it's a nice little area where like you might play with Legos or something there, or just like just sit there. There's a little stairwell, and there's a little stairwell, and there's a long bridge across which the swings are hanging from. Up in the, it's actually about what fourteen feet off the ground. It is. It's, it's pretty it's, tall. It's kind of scary, actually. It's but terrific. You walk. You can go across that, and then there's another section. There's where you railings. Just, there's railings, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there's of course there's railings, but you can go across that, and there's another little section where you can just like chill out. And then there's a little rope thing that you can climb down, and a fireman's pole. There's also a push-up bar. Pull-up. A pull-up pull up bar. bar. <laughs> it's a push-up. A pull-up bar hanging that's holding up the pole and the rope climb. And there's yeah, a there's a rope down ladder. Down one, a ladder down one way and, and slide down the other way. Yeah, the rope ladder is also supposed to be like a dexterity and balance thing yeah. to, to climb it while it's wiggling. We had to, we had to adjust a little bit because it was actually wiggling. It was too, too hard. Much. It was too much. <laughs> you need to apply some tension to it so it yeah. doesn't just swing crazily. And then you just like and then you fall do off. a back, double backflip and land to your face in the wood chips. But, right. So part and then of then underneath that section is the picnic table, which has got assembled today. There's, the, there's a little picnic table inside the base of one side that, yeah. of the towers, and that was missing the the seats. Yes. So that's and then in there. There are four swings hanging from the bridge. Two of them are normal swings, and two of them are skateboard swings. What is a skateboard swing for people who haven't? A skateboard swing is a swing that hangs by four ropes, four ropes, and it has. Two wooden bars connecting the two ropes on either side, and it has a skateboard shape on the bottom. You stand on it and swing from side to side. We'll hold on to the bars. So you, you yeah, you you uh, you stand with your feet on it. You know what it looks like to me is actually a little surfboard. Yes. But and you swing sideways yes. instead of front and back. Pippin started calling it a swingboard. Does he? So. I know you swing on that thing, not on the skateboard swing so much, but on the regular swings all yeah. the time. And yesterday I saw you were spending all this time on the swing, but you were also reading a novel. I was. <laughs> and I thought... I can do both. That was just the perfect summation of uh, a nerdy pots kid. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I'm I'm really glad that you guys are getting outside. You're getting some exercise. I've definitely exercise. gotten a lot outside a lot more since we got the place set. That, that was... So great. That was the point yeah. because we have this nice, we have this isolated yard and and woods in the back, and we yeah. wanted to get more of you outside. Yeah, but yeah, the the getting the getting the thing installed and all that with like there's a huge bed of wood chips. You can't really tell, but it's like 19 inches deep. Yeah. Right, and the idea is that it, that's al- almost two feet deep. The idea is if yes. you fall, even if you fall off the the top of you can't, it, you can't die. You can't. You probably won't break anything. Either. It, you'll. It will absorb a lot of impact. A lot of impact, yeah. So. And then, um, one more positive thing I want. What well, I'm spinning. Sorry. Don't spin. One more positive thing I wanted to note was that um, actually in my DM back to you, I said love tested positive. That 
um, the entire experience with Benjamin testing positive and having to isolate with you and, and mom in your bedroom was that it had a big silver line to it, personally, for everyone else. And, and even Belby, too, actually. Well, let me let me just make sure listeners understood what, what happened. Because this was actually early this year. Yes. So this was almost two years later. Yes. So is that and after we had a meetup with another family for an outdoor event, for an outdoor hike yeah. in January 2022. I remember that. I, I elected not to go. Yeah, well. Um, it's too cold and I'm lazy and I <laughs> stay in bed. It was a wonderful hike. Yes, I'm sure um, it was. We were all masked and outdoors in the sun. Yeah. We thought that it was safe, but we stopped for maybe under 10 minutes at yeah. a play structure, and yeah. Benjamin played with another kid. They were both masked, but yeah. they played together on this play structure, including going through one of these like tube oh, the slides tube, tube or side like a hamster it's, it's like a, corridor. Um, um, it like spins around and then comes out the land. Okay, I don't, I don't remember. But it's anyway, called, it's called a spiral tube slide. Okay. Oh, there's that, but there's also yeah. this like climbing thing where they climb through a tube, I've not like an elevated tube uh, through a tunnel. Okay, it's ah, a tunnel. It's fine. But anyway, um, young kids, you know, aren't great about keeping their masks sealed yeah. up properly, and you know they were doing their best, but yeah. um, we think that sometime. While they were sharing air in the slider in the tunnel, tunnel, yeah, this is where Benjamin was exposed. Yeah, and then we heard after we tested Benjamin and found out he was positive, we talked to the family that you were with, and they tested their kid, and it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> oops, oh. fatality. Yeah. Anyway, the the nice thing about this though is that. At this point, only two of us were not vaxxed. Yeah. And they were good. they were um, Malachi and Eleanor. Yes. Actually, I'm not sure about Eleanor. I think Eleanor had been vaxxed at that point because she turned five. Yes. The, the timeline is a little hard to keep straight. But anyway, what happened was we then made an attempt, even though we knew that it would probably not work. Yes. Because we didn't, it was a few days later, and you guys had all been palling around and doing all your normal stuff together. Yeah. And we thought, okay, uh, well, it's very likely that he's already spread it. Yes. But we're going to try. And isolate. And isolate for in our room with Benjamin for eight days. Eight days. <laughs> like seven eight days. Eight days. Eight whole goddamn days. Which, when I heard that, I was like, eight days? Yes. That's a nothing. So why was so we kept Benjamin basically in, in our bedroom and yeah. ate meals in the bedroom. Yeah. I did go downstairs with a mask on to work at my desk yeah. during the day. And Grace put a mask on and would, like, go out to get things. To get food and stuff. Yeah. But... Um, that, should be, that should be the name of a grocery store, food and stuff. Food and stuff. But we did... Basically, isolate. Yes. And nobody else tested positive. And that was wonderful. However, helped everyone's news a lot. But we do believe that you guys uh, were, were, in, were infected anyway. Yes. Um, and there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, if you've, if you're vaccinated, I think there are a lot of false negatives happening with the testing, yeah. especially the, the home testing. And what was really weird is Benjamin tested positive three times in a row on every other day. Yeah. Um, but when we got him two different PCR tests, both of those read negative. However, at the time, there were also a lot of scam PCR tests. Yeah. And so we suspect that we were billed for fake tests. Yeah, which I just want to take a moment to address that. <laughs> <laughs> Who would do that? Yeah. A kind was, of monster? What kind of a monster? So what they were doing was they would get people's test results, and then they wouldn't even like test them. They would just throw the test away and tell them that they were negative. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. But it was probably... It was kind of revolting. It was not a real test. And this was happening like so people have been investigated, and you know some yeah. of these outfits were found to have... Been faulty. Either reported all all positives or all negatives or not. I don't know who the hell would like not do the test and report it positive. 
just like, yeah, you're sick. And, but like you didn't find out if they were sick or not. But uh, keep in mind the reason that, that uh, we started testing Benjamin is that he was reporting a severe headache. Yes. And mom actually mentioned this, which was that never in her like 28, 22 something years of parenting has any one of her children come to her and just with like with no prior symptoms or any sort of being sick outside of it's anything. It's not. But she would just come, never, not, one of, not once has any of us ever come to her and said, I have a headache. My head, out of, my, oh, my head hurts completely out of the blue. I mean, Malachi can't really speak yes, about that, but and neither she can says, Eleanor. Like, but, without some sort of prior illness, like we have a fever, or like, right. like everything else is hurting, like we're obviously sick, or we have food poisoning, something like that. Right. Out, completely outside of any other sort of form of being sick, we feel fine. And then we're, later we're like, Mom, my head hurts. Of the six of you who are old enough to clearly, to tell, clearly us, tell us, if your head hurts. N- none of you have ever come and said, I have a headache. I have a headache, yeah. It's just not a thing that happens it did happen to me when i was a kid but it was because of stress and eye strain yeah eye i want to get gray hairs you do yeah oh keep just wait it'll yeah. happen on its own the more the more, the more stress <laughs> <laughs> anyway yes um but no like if if you have uncorrected vision yeah you can wind up with headaches due to eye strain yeah which is why you got me glasses actually yeah because i've noticed recently is that um Without my glasses on, I feel like my I might be I might be tripping up, but I feel like my vision has gotten worse. Like even though well, I wear my glasses I'm at almost all times, except when I don't need to be where I don't like need to sleep. Yeah, my vision it feels kind of like my vision's gotten worse without glasses. Okay, well I'm not blind. Of course, is it but still good with glasses? It's still like twenty twenty with, with glasses. Okay, so you know we do follow up, so yeah. we, we'll get you an, a follow up exam yeah, on us, on our schedule. You know, and, yeah, and um. You may get your prescription adjusted. So Possibly. far, it's very mild prescription, fortunately. Yeah, which uh, is not good. like mine, which is like, like Coke bottle bottoms. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's so, get on. Let's go on to the next question. Okay. Sorry. Get a little off track. But it, you were. But oh, but, I was talking about silver lining to um, Benjamin testing positive. When he was locked isolation. down, tell me what was fun. So what was fun was I know I said before we get I was like oh yeah we get to watch movies all day when then lockdown started. This was like, oh, yay, we quite literally get to watch movies all day, and that's what you have requested us to do, is go sit down with everyone, keep everyone fed and happy, diapers changed, and just watch movies all day. Yeah, if you can keep them from, like, rampaging, rampaging or wandering or off. Or wandering or, outside, something like that. Then just watch movies all day. Or just make sure we have no diaper blowouts, that yeah. everyone is hydrated, everyone is fed. Yeah. And that's sometimes that's all you can do. Yeah. Sometimes as a parent, that's literally the best you can do. Yeah, and then we would just get movies in the basement from our endless collection and just watch movies. <laughs> it's not endless, but yes. Well, you, see, I, I remember actually speaking about movies. I remember when uh, you found out how many Marvel movies there were. You were like, "There's no way in hell I'm going to collect all the Marvel movies." <laughs> and then it was like, "Well, let's just say, let's just say for the record that I've." I've acquired them very slowly. That's fair, yeah. Right. That's true. And often when they're on sale. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but you have taken, I know you've taken a lot of pride in um, collecting 4K copies of every single Marvel movie. I, yes. Even the bad ones. <laughs> the bad ones, like Thor Dyke Will, yes. And the original Hulk. And the, oh. Anyway, um, it's just... Honestly, Hulk isn't really a Hulk if it's not, um, what's his name? Mark think. Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, yes. But he he does a fantastic job yeah. as the Hulk. But no, uh, at yeah. some point I will we will probably be able to convince you guys. So guys, let's take half of these movies. The ones that we never rewatch because no one wants to watch it. <laughs> yeah. And let's give those away. Let's just give them away. Yeah. Okay, cuz we can free up some shelf space for yeah. the ones that we actually rewatch. Yeah. I I'm I'll say we were thinking it. thinking about doing that with the Switch games too actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say it for the for the record that I would totally if if if, if um someone else was setting it up and said, "Hey, do you want to watch um do you want to watch Ant-Man again?" I would yeah. say, "Sure." Yeah. That's a fun movie. Yeah, really fun. Or if you want if someone said, "Do you want to watch Thor Ragnarok again?" Thor I would Ragnarok. say, awesome. "Absolutely." Yeah. Especially if I had another chance to watch it in a theater, which in yeah. a safe way. In a safe way. But if someone said, "Hey, do you want to watch Iron Man 3 again?" I'd be like, "No." No. <laughs> I don't. What life's, about what about um, Life's too short. Thor Dark World. Thor Dark World is is torture to get through. Yeah. 
Ugh. If you do enjoy slower movies, though, uh, I thought there were a lot of scenes that uh, sort of dragged on for a long time. But I think my main problem with Lord Eklo is that the pacing was all over the place. It's all over the place. It's You lose interest in what's happening. They don't, they, they don't, it felt like the writers didn't really know how to keep the audience's interest long enough to get to the next fun part. Yeah, it's... It's no, it's it's frustrating to watch. And like, it was just such a serious movie. There weren't enough gags. <laughs> well, this is what I feel like when they they hired what's his name, uh, Tato Waikiti or so Waitiki or the the guy that directed Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, he took it in such a different direction and made it much more fun. Yeah, you could say he knew what he was doing and the audience he... Actually, no, you could say he knew the audience he was portraying to. But he found... Um, so the, even the first Thor movie, which was directed by Straczynski, the yeah. guy that J. did Michael Babylon Straczynski. 5, right? J. Michael Straczynski. Um, it's, it's a little tedious. Yeah. It's not terrible, but it's a little tedious. And it was, you feel it was like, still fun. You it know? hasn't. It has some fun in it, but I feel like it really didn't find its tone. Yeah. But in this is this is the thing when you're shooting movies about superheroes running around in their underwear and whatnot. Like, if it takes itself too seriously, it's death for the for the film. Yeah. It's just death for the audience. If it's like this is serious. No, this is serious business. Real, no, this is real shit. This is serious. Uh, but and. Thor Ragnarok Did took not. that and like turned these scenes where like Thor was actually in the opening act. Thor is hanging in a cage, being tortured in a hell dungeon by a giant flaming hell beast, right? And he's having fun. And he's making jokes. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's like tormenting the guy back with by by roasting him. And he's like, and he's also like talking to the skeleton in the cage. Yeah. The, it's just. It's like, hey, buddy. Yeah. It's full of. Yeah. It's full of gags. Where, um, yeah, anyway, we're one of the we're getting a little off track, but just one more thing about that is one of the dynamics that I love that causes a lot of fun to happen in a superhero film is when the superhero takes themselves too seriously, mm-hmm. and everyone else in the movie is like, Shut up, shut the, <laughs> shut up, shut the up, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, like, what I was starting to say is if you said, Hey, you have a chance to watch Winter Soldier again in the theater, I'd be like, Absolutely, yeah, that is a really fun film yeah uh, so there's a there's a number of them that i think were absolutely keepers and really fun to watch and rewatch. and uh, really i think of it this way the movies that you actually have in your collection yeah. should be the ones that you want to rewatch. and you'll rewatch with future generations otherwise you bought a movie and you're gonna watch it and you'll once. watch it once <laughs> and then you just have this thing sitting on a shelf right in dust yeah so that's not so fun that's not fun but um Yes, so we absolutely should weed the yes. collection at some point. But the thing, okay. that, the thing that made you guys me, watched a bunch of movies. Yes, the thing that made me uh, bring this up as a talking point when you asked me what are some positive things you remember yes. is when Bubba came out of isolation. He said, "I and I quote to you and mom, that was fun. Can we do that again sometime?" <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the ways we kept him busy is by letting him play his Terraria. Ter- a video game called Terraria, which is an open world RPG. Yeah. Uh, for kids and he had a lot of fun playing that yeah and he he had a blast building like um he, he likes built, to build roller coasters yeah and he was building a giant tree house yeah and by tree house i don't mean a house in a tree i mean a house that is a tree okay so this was something really late in the pandemic well yeah it's it's hard to say whether it's late or early in some ways it's still early right in some ways but it feels like mm, groundhog like day yeah Right. So, but um, this was this was actually this year. So this yes. kind of leaves out. We've talked a little bit about what we were up to in in 2020, but um, what about last year? 2021. That's the thing about 2021 is that I don't remember it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't really remember it. All I really remember is waiting until I was 13. <laughs> For me, what happened in 2021 was um, I. My job blew up like in a really yeah, kind of. traumatizing way, and so the reason the reason that I don't remember a lot of it is because it was traumatic, and yeah. I and I tend to block out traumatic experiences, bad memories, and difficult experiences. Yeah, um, but then I fortunately maybe it's time for another therapy session. <sighs> fortunately, managed to. We're trying not to turn this into a therapy session. Yes, of course. But I, I'm a. Uh, 
uh, trying. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get another job where I could work remotely. Yes. And that turned into that was a contract job for a while, and then I continued. I was hired by the same employer, and I still have that job. Yes, and that is Argo. Uh, yes. yes. Um, so I work almost entirely from our basement. Yes. Which is great, except Wonderful. that I do, I, you know, I'm like talking about all the benefits of working from home. Wonderful. But it wears on you, you know. Yeah. It does wear on you not to be able to like. Be there with your coworkers. And go coworkers. have lunch with your coworkers. Well, like okay. It. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to meet with someone. We're going to grab lunch from the cafeteria. And then I'm going to insist that we sit outside and we sit like 10 feet, 12 but, feet but apart. Then that, but then you're that guy, right? And uh, you're, that guy. you're that guy. And everyone else now. I mean, back then it was p- more understandable. People were more, in 2021, people were more yeah. accommodating. But now they've literally like... Why would you even do Everyone, that? Everyone like just gives you like a look, like. And just to be on, clear, yeah. the reason is because it's not over. Community transmission is actually higher than it was then. It then. Was and I actually remember seeing a tweet where someone was like, "I miss the old days of 2020 where everyone actually took stuff seriously." <laughs> okay. So there's right. not there's not you know I did do some nice things. I if you look through my photo roll, yes, uh, you can see. All the nice stuff we did in the garden last year. Yes, and this that is, that was great. And yeah. we're we're doing garden stuff again, kind of at a lesser scale this year because we have less free time. Yeah, but it it is it's great. I love it. It's very gratifying. It keeps me helps keep me sane. I would say this is one of the like um, very few plus sides of social media. Yeah, which is that um, if you like take pictures of stuff that's happening. Like, maybe not even major stuff, but just stuff that you're doing in general. And because then when you get to major stuff, you can also take pictures of that. And, like, we got some stuff done in the garden today. We got the soil into the garden. We got the place that finished. It, that kind of stuff. You take pictures of it, say, like, post on Twitter. Yeah. Then when you're having trouble remembering stuff, you can just go through your old Twitter feed. Your, or your, either your feed or just your camera roll. Just your camera roll. Well, this is one of the reasons I blog and write a newsletter and all this is so yeah. that I can go back and remind myself of all this uh, good and bad that yeah. happened. And, and this is one of the reasons that I don't remember much of 2021 at all, is that... You weren't doing much on... It wasn't a very memorable... No, not even that was on you know, social media, but it wasn't a very memorable year. Everything just felt the same. Okay. So then this is... I remember you got your new job, but yeah, that's about it. Well, that's the thing also. When you're starting a new job and you really, really need it because you've been unemployed for three months... Yeah. Um, and your health insurance is suddenly like, getting a new job becomes a huge celebration. Is that well that but also suddenly I'm working fourteen hour days. Yeah, which which means I don't see you guys very much. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to get and keep a job at the level that I have now. It is yes, um, it is nice to be a special guest on the podcast today. Well, good. I'm glad you enjoy it. But uh, now I'm going to make you sad. Yes, you are. <laughs> because I want to pivot from, we were talking about what are the positive, positive things, things that you remember? Yes. What are the negative things that you remember? Well, you test negative, mom tested oh, negative. Oh, for God's sake. I test, actually, I tested positive in you 2021. You tested positive, uh, I think, once, like once or twice in 2021. And you isolated upstairs for a little bit. I, actually, I do remember that. You isolated upstairs for a little bit. That's when true. We were working on the garden, and you, I think you started feeling fatigued. Actually, I think I remember this day specifically. You started feeling like fatigued, and you took a test and positive. And then you started isolating up here in the same for, I isolated for several days and was testing negative. And yeah. I don't, I still don't really have clear evidence of whether I was infected with Delta or not. Yeah. But I did get a PCR later, like a couple days later, and it was negative. So yeah. I don't really know. So, But yeah. anyway, so th- what we think, just to inject, what we think happened is actually we were all exposed, and we didn't even know this is a thing, but there's more evidence for it now, in January 2020. Yeah. Because actually... That was our, early as hell. That was before people really thought there was community spread happening in the yeah. U.S., um, which is maybe not that surprising because this is an insidious virus, right? But yeah. it turns out our one of our neighbors 
was infected very early, way before the lockdowns were happening. Yeah. Um, so uh, we th- and I, looking at my journal and my notes, we all had a really weird digestive and respiratory illness, like th- that was nothing like ev- anything that Grace had ever seen with kids. Yeah. It wasn't like a norovirus. It wasn't like a flu. It wasn't like a cold. It wasn't like. It was weird. It wasn't like hand, foot, and mouth. It was, uh, you know, she's yeah. got with, you know, eight kids. Like you said, like you said before, mom has a history in um, epidemiology, epidemiology a little bit. But and just, but just, I'm but talking, just, talking just about history as a experience. parent. As a parent. experience as a parent, yeah. Yeah, raising eight kids, you get to see a, a lot, lot of childhood. Stuff. A lot of Yeah, crap. we've all, I mean, we've seen fist disease. We've yeah. seen, we've all had fist, like hand, foot, and mouth. We've all had this yeah. and that and the other thing. We've all yeah. had norovirus multiple times, you know. Yeah. And this was not like any, like any, any of, of that. that. Anyway, uh, but we didn't think that we weren't thinking in January that it was possibly COVID. We were aware of COVID in China. Yes, but it turns out our one of our neighbors was diagnosed and was infected. Yeah, uh, and so we believe that we actually were all infected in in January of 2020, and then I may have been reinfected in short. This would have been shortly after vaccination with Delta. In the summer of 2021, maybe. Yeah. Um, at least enough to register positive on a test. And then we actually were all reinfected with Omicron yeah. in January of 2022. So, But back anyway, to the negative things. Back to the negative things besides the tests. Well, what, what were? I think when 2021 started up, part of the reason I don't remember it is because every day felt exactly the same. And that it starts to drain, drain on you. It does start to drain on you. It's like you can see... You, when you watch Groundhog Day, yes, you can see Bill Murray get just like more, more and more dejected, more and more dejected until suicidal. literally he's just like, okay, I'm a, I'm, I'm here a, again, and then he again. steps out in front of a truck. He's like, he's actually like, like gesturing. He's come like, come on, kill come me, on. bring it on, bring it on, because yeah. he just wants this to end, but it does yeah. not end for does him. not end. And I really hope none of you. We're getting into that space. I know that all of this has been very hard on your mental health, but other, yeah. other negative things. Yeah. Uh, any um, any other negatives that come to mind? You guys have given up a lot. We so. have. I think that not being able to socialize with people has definitely taken its toll on my personal social skills. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I'm not that outgoing to begin with. Yeah. And... I think just not being able to be around other children my age is just a general, like, downside. Yes. Yeah. Because um, I think generally human beings are actually, most most of their entire lives, human beings are meant to be around other people their age. Yeah. And we always, uh, you guys are homeschooled, but we have always made it a point to arrange play dates and activities and, like and share. We had atrium and we had, uh, back in Saginaw, we had atrium and we had um, preschool, me and Sam. You had preschool, you had atrium, and we had play dates. And we had play dates all the time, yeah. And you also got to see your your grandmother and other family yeah. members some days. Yeah. And you were around a lot of people. Yeah, and honestly, as an, and as an extra of it, I need to be around a lot of people. I, if I don't, I go a little stir crazy. You would c- characterize yourself as extroverted? Mostly extroverted, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. But um, yeah. see, the, you guys have different needs, and this is why it yes. becomes actually a little hard for your mom and I to judge, like, who needs exactly what. Yeah. Because we know that as far as, like, Sam is starting to crack, right? Sam and is starting to crack, yeah. Sam is very introverted, and as far as he's concerned, if he has an endless supply of books and... Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, is well-fed and can go for a long walk every day. He's pretty much fine. He's pretty much happy as a clam, and he doesn't really like socializing. Yeah. Partly because of his speech difficulties. He's but, pretty apathetic, yeah. But partly because he just, you know, he's like me in many ways. He kind of prefers his keep his own company, Yeah, you know. So, um. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's been a real downside. Yeah. And we keep trying to figure out, okay, what's a safe thing to do? What's a safe thing to do? What's safe Your thing mom to do? is looking at like swimming classes. She's looking at like... Um, uh, swimming uh, is Satan. Uh, well, it, it's actually, 
you guys would have been in swimming classes by yeah. now. And it's important to us that you all learn how to swim somehow. Like just basic swimming. Even. Yeah, it's really important to us. It's, I do think it's important. And I know I'm, one day I'm going to have to face the music, but you don't like I don't swimming. like swimming at all. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> like when I go, well, I've been to pool parties before and all I really do is like cling, bob around, sit, standing side. up and cling to the side. Uh, like if it's, if I can feel the gun on my feet, then I'll maybe walk out and, do, yeah. and like play around. Well, if you have a good teacher that will teach you basics without of, making you feel like you're drowning <laughs> teach you the basics of yes. um you will not feel that way yes. and i think i did have a good teacher i was definitely just overreacting okay well you might have been a little dramatic do you think um yeah if you nod at the microphone no one can hear you <laughs> by not <laughs> jesus sorry but uh, yes, it might have been a little bit traumatic for me, and I still have uh, quite the few of deep war. Actually, this um, I've, yeah. this video game Subnautica for the Switch and on Steam that we've that we've been playing, um, oh, it gives you a phobia. The, it freaks the hell out of me, man. Oh. I'll be like swimming around, and I I would like uh, the oh, game. God. It forces you to go down into the deep waters, and I'm over here in the shallow waters. Like, no, I think I'm just gonna stay right here. And then like I look over like a, an underwater cliff, and it's like nothing but empty water yeah. abyss yeah. and i'm like oh hell no yeah there, there there are two films for me that that trigger a fear of drowning one yeah. is a film called the abyss go figure it's set under <laughs> yeah. under ocean yeah and um another is i think it's the second alien maybe the third alien movie where they have to swim underwater a long way to escape something yeah and okay. that that set up where it's like you have to swim, you know, a hundred yards underwater yeah. to and escape. And the scene, actually, the scene. There's no, there's no yeah. way. And there's then you no get way. there, and like the, uh, the, the thing you were gonna exit through is blocked. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, speaking of that, the scene from Avatar: The Last Airbender when Zuko has to swim through a section and he has to use his fire powers underwater to melt through a block of ice that's blocking his way. That's that just terrifies. That, that scares me. I don't know why they Seriously traumatize viewers like that. Yeah. with that shit. But sorry, but, <laughs> stuff. It's good. It's good. It's good content. It's good. Uh, it's a good show, and I love. I love those scenes. You love they Avatar, yeah. but it is scary. It is but scary. I, I guarantee you, if you um, actually learn basic water safety and swimming, yes. you will lose your phobia of being like falling into deep yes. water. But I think people generally confuse my phobia with just be a phobia of swimming and water. I do not have a it's phobia not, of swimming in water. I it's am, not really a phobia. Yeah, I'm actually perfectly fine in shallow waters. It's like the fear of like falling into incredibly deep waters and not being able to get up. You don't feel like you have the skills to keep yourself keep, safe. Uh, stay at the top. Right. So you need to yes. you need to learn those skills. It's not that and it, hard. But it's also that um, I in deep, really deep waters, I always feel like this, something can be under me. Because it goes so deep down. <laughs> you know what? That is that is actually something that I am still frightened of. Yeah. Just like, so long, like if I don't have eyes out down beneath me. But that's the thing. When you have eyes out down beneath you, it gets scary because it's like just an infinite abyss. But if you don't, it's even more scary because it's like, is there something under me? It's when I am um, swimming in the ocean or a pond where the water is completely opaque. Yes. Is frightening, especially since... Um, there can be sudden drop-offs. There can be things that you don't want to step on. Yeah. And whether there are creatures, you know, you know what? Here's one of the reasons where the, why this still scares me is one time when I was a kid, I was like sneaking out and um, we were like playing in places we weren't supposed to go, yeah. like uh, in a up a creek. Like classic, classic stuff. Classic child uh, boom uh i'm not a boomer um, not a boomer gen x childhood stuff, gen x childhood right yes. your mom throws you out of the house says don't come home till it's getting don't dark come, don't come home till dinner time and you're like okay what are we gonna do and so we would like find like this like stagnant pool up a creek under yeah. an overpass a traffic overpass or something and we go decided the construction site <laughs> yeah right and we decided to go skinny dipping in this pond yeah and we did yeah and when we came out there was blood running all down oh, our legs because damn. each of us had like a dozen leeches Shit, attached to our bodies. Blood isn't scary. Sorry. <laughs> that was so gross. Like blood doesn't really scare me. I think leeches, the idea of not exactly blood, but just the idea of something cutting you and things that suck out your blood is scary. Well, you know, the black flies are like the same yes. way and you don't Which feel is why it. I want to kill as many of them as possible. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have black flies that like land on like your shirt collar or your arm or and something. And like suck through the shit. And it's like, well, they, they don't suck like mosquitoes, dude. They don't. This is weird. They have these very sharp mouth parts. And they like have this jaw that opens sideways with these like razor sharp cutting, yeah. cutting parts. And they, um, they first they inject a uh, an anesthetic, so that you don't feel anything. At you don't first. feel the bite at all. You don't feel it at all. And but they like rip and tear your flesh with their yeah. little mouth parts, and then they lap up the blood, <laughs> and you look down, and there's like this little puddle, this little puddle of of blood, flesh and blood, and it's like, on your arm. And then shortly after they've, like you've smashed them or they're gone, yeah, it like, actually takes almost an hour to heal up at all, not to heal up for you to really feel it. Oh but then yeah, it, then you're like, ow. Ow, this then is, it starts to swell ah, and it starts to bruise yeah. and you wind up with like bruises from these bites for seven days and you get yeah. you get something called black fly fever when you have too many bites. I had it's 16 insane. bites on my legs. It's insane. Uh, it's pretty bad. Black flies can go burn in hell. They can go burn in hell. Really sick of the black flies. They're much worse than mosquitoes yeah. in that way. Because like in that, in that way, especially because mosquitoes, I hate them. I want to smack every single one, but... Black flies are just worse, so, many, so much worse than some of levels. Yeah, black flies, like, a mosquito bite usually only itches for 24 hours or t- maybe a little longer, but for me, not much longer. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, like, putting a little uh, a little Benadryl or um, hydrocortisone yeah. will take that down, but black uh, fly bites, man, they're off. So I would say that's... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the ne- so that's one of the... Ne- uh, the day by day, so every, every day is the same drones on you and that sort of uh it leads to a series of other problems but that's where the that's the main negative thing where everything else goes so it comes from yes is that uh every day feels the same that's that's the main thing that you're not because so i'm trying to do like um yeah we're trying to plan things like we'll take uh, we did take you i mean this is not really ideal but like i'm not saying this is fixes everything we did the, we did like, the pie five crazy yeah, last weekend I took you guys, the older kids, to a pride flag raising, but yeah. almost everyone there was unmasked, so we're standing at and a distance, yeah. and they're saying... And they're saying stuff, and I can't hear them. They're saying stuff, but they didn't have a PA system, and they keep saying, come closer so everyone can hear, and I'm like, are you joking? You yeah. want everyone to get in shoulder to like, shoulder? I know the viewer, the viewer listener can't see what I'm doing, but... With your arms apart, okay. yes. Yeah, and you're like, no, I don't actually want to get shoulder to shoulder with a big it wasn't even a big crowd it's probably a hundred people yeah but like of unmasked folks so we're hanging hanging back deliberately yeah. on the fringes which meant we couldn't really hear the people especially the people who aren't really good at public speaking yeah this is actually the first time i have been at like a main a big public event in almost a year i think yeah so it was really surprising to be in public with like seeing other human beings again, <laughs> and they're still there. They still they still exist. They're still there. Yeah. But just like I felt like everyone was making eye contact with me, even the people who went. And they, they I had really no. Weren't. I felt as I had lost my ability to differentiate conversation. Oh yeah, like when there were a lot of conversations going on around you. I used it, to have this ability where I could like I could like selectively tone out everything else and hear what someone else is saying and then hear what someone else is saying and then keep doing that. Now it's just like 50 people talking over each other and I can all heal every single one of them at the same time. Well, you know what? I have bad news for you. Yeah? I don't... I, you know, It could be just that you're out of practice. It's possible that. As you but know. what I think is happening is actually... It seems to have long COVID. Is actually that you're having a long COVID neurological symptom that yeah. affects your hearing. And this actually happens in aging, too, because as I get older, yes, when you guys are all talking at once, I can't hear or understand anything. Yeah. If, if two people are talking at the same time in the room, I used to be able to just pick out one. Yeah. I could have a conversation with one. Like, I could go to a bar. Yeah. With a friend and have a conversation with my friend while conversations were happening all around me. Yeah. And that wasn't difficult yes now right? it's difficult but as i've gotten older i can't distinguish people's voices when more than one person in a room is talking i can't keep them straight and when everyone's talking at once when when someone else is having a conversation 
uh, I can't speak. Like yeah. I can't process what's happening. And yeah, that's uh, that was happening even before the pandemic. And that's just yeah. like an autistic brain aging. Right? Yes. But I think that in your case, you're you're having a little premature um, damage to your auditory cortex. Yeah, that so, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the thing. Long COVID is a bitch, and we're only just now starting to understand it, how the kind of support that people are going to need. But yeah, anyway. okay, I have other questions. You have other questions. Let's, let's, I'm not trying to. Those are the main negative things that I wanted to get. Okay. To get back. And but. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to make the future seem bleak. Bleak. It but, already seems bleak enough. But, you know, we're going to have some challenges. Yeah. Um, but I think we're also going to have people working on them. Yeah. So has this time, this is, I think, our last question. We need to wind up before too much longer. Yeah. Has this time made your relationships with family members better or worse? Much worse. Much, much worse. Okay. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I think that... We're see with like, for the first time, we're all seeing each other's uh like weaknesses. How so? Like it weren't before. We weren't really before because we weren't so forced to interact with each other daily. Is it because well, of, I don't had a long COVID symptom where she went through a bit of an agitated depression? Yeah, but I don't want to talk at length about other people's yes. s- symptoms. But are there uh, um, medical issues? But their experiences. Right. But uh, that's true. But uh, let me ask you this. Do you think it's just because of the amount of time you were with them? Or do you think it's because you were seeing people when they were in trouble or at their worst or knocked down or, you know, they were behaving badly because they were burned out or fried? I think it was definitely because they were people, we were showing a lot of weaknesses in the sense that we all constantly made out and fried and we just didn't want to deal with it. One of the things that I like about our home here is that there really is, with a, with a good sized yard, and now with a play structure, everyone and, can get away from that. And with the woods, is that um, pe- when they need to, people really can tune out and go yes. do something else. They can take a book, or they can go for a hike, or they can go walk in the woods, or they can go work in the garden, or climb on the play structure, or swing, yeah. or whatever. I think that's been very valuable, but. Yes, I when, know we've had a lot less fights ever since we've been able to like get outside and do all the stuff away from everyone else. I think that's great, but I did during the winter months especially. I know that this, you know, like or if it's when it's raining all day, say, yeah, um, I think feel that this really does weigh on you, and yeah. we're all, you know, it's a bit of a. Do you know what a bottle show is in screenwriting? Okay, so. There, there are some ep- episodes of Star Trek and episodes of the X Files and all the. It, it's a screenwriting trope. It's called a bottle show. Yeah. And on the one hand, it's a way of um, character development. No, well, that too. But it, it's a way of shooting a really cheap episode. Yes. Where you don't have to do a lot with sets. You just use your basic set. But uh, basically, you put the characters in a bottle. One of the th- ways. In a <laughs> bottle. You put the characters in a so, little bottle. Stay, stay on the mic. Sorry, um, it's okay. I know, uh, Wiggly. Um, the the ultimate. This actually happens in some episodes, probably Seinfeld. That kind of. It's a, it's a is sometimes you actually have your characters trapped in an elevator. Oh, I think I know. I think I've had one of those before. Yeah. Right, and the idea is, you put your characters in a bottle, and then you shake up the bottle. <laughs> right, and yes. um, so like there's an X Files episode where. They're all trapped in a house be- together because there's some kind of weird alien contagion in the trees that's uh, killing people, like okay. like piranha bugs and piranha beetles or whatever. If you go outside, you're going to be stripped to bare die. bones in seconds or yeah. some, something like You'll that. You'll die. Right. And so everyone's trapped inside and then they have to talk to each other. Yeah. And that's where you get like, oh, now you're revealing... Well. They did this. You reveal a lot about characters like personality and deeper sort of lore. Yeah. So which and one? Which show is it where the characters f- fall into like an a bottomless hole? That was Gravity Falls. 
in Gravity, that's right, it was Gravity Falls, there were the, a bunch of the characters all like fall into a bottomless hole and then they spend the next 20 minutes, 20 minutes just talking literally falling yeah. in darkness. Just talking to each other. And as they're falling in darkness, they start to talk about, this one's a little different because they actually, they actually dramatize like, some of their backstory. Yeah. And they said that they wanted to use no backgrounds this episode. That was the idea. Right. But the funny thing about it was they ended up drawing more backgrounds than they would have right. played additional episodes. Yeah, because they because had backgrounds they're, for the stories that they're telling. Yeah, they're, it's a series of stories told by the characters, and they did animate them. Now, if it had been yeah. truly like a bottle show... Where like it was just not on the scheme the entire time, it was just them in the void. They'd just be talking. They'd just be talking. Right? It's like... Yeah. And sometimes... They actually will do that in, like I described, like the trapped in an elevator sketch. Yes, that sounds quite fun, actually. And what happens in the sort of famous, the characters are trapped in an elevator scenario is first half of it, everyone wants to get the hell out. Everyone wants to get the hell out of there. Right? Yeah. But then this transformation occurs where they talk to each other so much and, you know, laugh and cry and the real the real journey is the friends they made along the way, right? Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. all their they're upset about all their plans. Yeah. But by the time they get to the end yeah. Uh then they like the fire firefighter pries the door to open or whatever, yeah. you know, and they can leave. They don't care. Yeah. Right. They're like, oh, we were having such a great conversation. I'm sad to see it end. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the arc of a bottle yeah. episode. I think that if we were to call the pandemic a bottle episode, it would be that <laughs> it's we gone. went through those two stages, but it's gone on so long that now everyone's back to get me the hell everyone's out. Everyone's back to get me the hell out. I think. Yeah. You know what? I think that's that's a good uh, arc to bring it back around. And yes. so. Um, so. In a way, and uh, it's it's a mix. You could say it's a mixed bottle to go with the metaphor that we've been talking about. Yes. In the sense that, I think it's worsened the relationship a lot because everyone is seeing each other's weaknesses. Yes. But I think you see each other at their worst at their when worst. they're burned out when and sick of each and other. Sick of each other. Yes, exactly that. But also, it's it's made a lot of relationships better, in the sense that um, seeing someone else's vulnerabilities can help you understand them better. Does that, does that make sense? Am I making any sense? It does make sense okay. to me. Um, and. Um, and you can be more sympathetic to them, uh, and uh, you can still start to see things in their point of view more. The yeah, the the poss- the the downside of that can be that when people show their weaknesses, if you're sort of feeling inherently cruel, you can mock them or attack them for yeah. that, rather than find that, a way. And that can seriously scoop shit up. And that well, that that's what your mom and I have been afraid will happen when you guys fight. Yeah. Is that you will damage your long term relationship. Yeah. In that like when we are when you're out of the house, when you're off living your life yeah. with your own families, hopefully, or whatever you're gonna do, you know, with your yeah. life, that you guys then will be like, Hey, your sister called and you'll be like, Oh, I don't want to talk to to her. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm never calling I'm never Yeah. Uh, yeah, know, honestly it's gotten to the point where um Belly and Pippin especially have started to have fights about really genuine things. You know, it's not it's not anymore just like I wanted to use this Lego brick, but he was using <laughs> like wouldn't give me a chain with it. Right. Now it's more like Belby's nagging personality is seriously getting into me. I want him to leave me the hell alone, but he's an extra van, he won't leave me the hell alone when I need my personal time and my personal space. You know whose whose um story that is? Whose story is that? Me and my brother. Yeah. And it's it's very sad to watch it play out again because my brother was very extroverted, yes. and he wanted to play with me all, all the, time. the time, all the time. And I was very introverted, and so you like, and I don't want to play. <laughs> I liked nothing more than quiet and reading. Yeah, and so we were constantly um, butting right. heads, and butting and, heads. and our bottle episode was that we were actually living in a trailer with a yard. The size of a postage stamp. Yeah. Right. So there literally was no away space. Away space to like be away from each other for a while. And that really affected my relationship with my brother negatively. We got off yeah. on a bad foot, you might say, and it affected it for the and rest the of... And the foot just sort of started getting more and more crippled. <laughs> well, it... Until it, it couldn't walk anymore. You know, so... so Sorry to sound so depressed. Well... Like depressing, but... <laughs> But just so I kept on vacating. We're, we're not actually having a therapy session. Yes. But I'm saying that the patterns you set up in your childhood. Yeah. If you don't 
remedy if, some of them if, in time. If everyone involved doesn't yeah. make a deliberate, conscious effort to change them, yeah, they will stick. They'll just stick. And like you keep throwing at the wall, eventually it's going to stick. And we don't want you guys... We want you guys to be able to turn to each other in later life as yeah. as a cluster of siblings who had a very profound shared experience growing up. Yes. Right. Well, I'm actually most concerned about my relationship with um, the younger kids, Benjamin and Pippin, mm-hmm. and uh, also Benjamin and Pippin's relationship with each other, mm-hmm. in the sense that um, me, Veronica, and Sam have already vowed that even if we do get so angry at each other, we're never not going to be like, I don't want to talk to them, because we're going to be like, oh, I need to tell tell them off. <laughs> I'm like not, they call you be like, oh, I'm I need not, to tell them. I, I'm not going to, it's not that I'm not going to talk to them. Oh, they're going to hear from me. They're going to hear from me. <laughs> yes. So like okay. if we, like we've, we promised that we're never going to not like be like not talk yeah. to each other. Well, you know what? We're never not be talking to each other. I have to say, uh, I think we're going to wind it up shortly, but I have to say yes. that um, you guys finally now, after so many years of fighting against the obvious solution have come around oftentimes to the point, not every time, but exactly. often to the point where it's like, hey, it's time to do the chores, it's time to do the cleanup. Oftentimes, you guys actually will get together, negotiate, cooperate, and then you'll put on some tunes. Yeah. And we hear you guys all sometimes like singing yeah. together while while we're like, while you're like cleaning the kitchen, cleaning up yeah. a meal. And I have to say that that is... And this sounds. This is not actually intended to be a dumb joke, but it's literally music to our ears. Like okay. to hear you guys interacting in this positive and supportive way. Yes. And turning a boring chore into a fun, a fun activity. You guys. Activity. Yeah. All right, Joshua. I think we're going right. to wind up. Um, All right. I just want to say that. Yeah. Stay in touch with us. Stay in contact with us about your feelings. And if you have ideas for things that you think we can do safely, safely. we're trying our best to implement them. So yeah. I love you, son, and I'm proud of you. And um, yeah, to you know where to find me. All right. Okay. You are humbled by how well I am doing. I'm humbled by your your the way you're developing. Oh, you. I also do. You want to plug your, any of your uh, your social media uh, enterprises here? I have shame. You have shame. Have you're not shame. not ready to plug them. I, have you shame. Want, I can put them in the show notes if you, you can want. put them in the show notes. But I have shame. I would never like okay. say that my ad on Twitter is not the real jigs. I would never say that. Oh. Or that my YouTube channel is jigs. Okay. Or that my Discord well, is photo s jigs. Well, quick, what do you, what do, what do people expect to find on your stuff on your sites? On Twitter. On any of what do you do on social oh, media uh, that you're? You I want animate, to share? and I have a gaming channel with my brother Sam, and we play video games, and we want to get we want to work on that some more together. Yeah, it's a little bit hard. You were having technical difficulties. It's also hard to get um, quiet. (laughs) Yes, quiet time. But I make animation projects as an independent animator, and I'm working on that and getting better at that. And it's a lot of fun to make animations. And you're 13. And I'm 13, and I do art sometimes too. So yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm gonna play the thingy. You play the thingy. Here we go. Okay. Well, that was fun. That was fun.